In my last video, I uh, disassembled the binary data I got off of this microcontroller over here. And in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take the disassembled code and analyze it and decide what it does. Um, I haven't got to this microcontroller memory over here, which I, I need to um, read and disassemble as well. Uh, and then at the end of this video, I'll just go over all the integrated circuits again, because my first video on this ECU, I from what I could find on the internet on data sheets, I decided what each of these chips did. Uh, but now that I've continuity checked from, from the pins on the, on the actual uh, ECU itself, I can actually verify, uh, I'll go over the actual operation of each of these uh, integrated circuits on the ECU board. So in the last video, I went over writing a Python script to actually do the disassembly of the machine code. Uh, and in that disassembler, I've got this file here, which is um, a file which I put labels in. So as I go through and analyze the code, um, I can put these comments in at certain addresses or labels in to, to describe uh, actually what the program is doing. Uh, so these are the labels and comments which I've come which I've uh, come up with for the actual disassembly. Uh, but to make sense of them, you need to see them in the context of the, uh, the assembly code itself, which is in this file. So in this assemb assembly uh, code, when I run the disassembler, it actually puts my uh, comments and um, labels into this code. So as I go through and analyze it, I can actually um, make more sense of, of the code. Uh, and the actual approach is a bit like a Sudoku puzzle. So as you find out the labels and put comments in the code, it makes other bits of the code clearer as to what they do. And then you put labels into those and, and uh, comments in, uh, and that makes it even more clearer. And, and it kind of uh, eventually sort of resolves itself. Uh, but I've only gone so far with this just to just to understand what this actual microcontroller does because I had the uh, thought that maybe it was used to actually read and write um, the main ECU memory in um, in the factory uh, at ma manufacturing time. Um, so I started off um, from like a serial transmit interrupt and serial receive interrupt, uh, and I could make out um, some labels as, as to where. Like it has uh, buffers for receiving data and transmitting the data because it uses a serial interface on this microcontroller. So that so I start off with these two interrupts here. So this is the receive one, uh, and again I I can find where the buffer is where it receives data into. Uh, and if I, if I scroll down a bit. Um, to this bit of code down here, one line here. So uh, also I found out it uses the analog to digital converter on the microcontroller, uh, and that seemed a bit unusual for reading and writing to, to the actual main memory of the of the ECU. Um, so I, I resolved some labels here as to where it puts the analog to digital value uh, and things and, and how it um, configures the analog to digital uh, converter. Uh, then if I come down a bit further in the code, uh, down to here. So um, because I knew uh, where the transmit buffers were and the receive buffers, I could then find uh, functions within the code uh, where it was actually setting up um, tran the transmit buffer data. Uh, and there's a series of functions uh, like this where it actually uh, puts information into transmit buffer. Uh, and I noticed that actually uh, the first transmit buffer, uh, it gives it like a message ID, like that one's message ID 1, that goes to message ID 2. Uh, and I could resolve uh, what kind of bits of data was being sent with each message. Um, so each of these functions uh, kind of is responsible for sending its own its own message and it sends and receives a, a set of messages. Uh, and then, so if I now go up a bit higher in the code, uh, with the information I had and actually looking at the, the layout of the actual uh, ECU board, I actually f uh, decided where the pins were going to in, on the ECU board. So I found out that actually there's a, the serial data um, pins for transmitted and received data 
well, they, they were actually going to the NOC sensor um, control IC. Uh, so actually, these messages uh, that are on this EC, on this particular um, microcontroller on the ECU, they're to do with programming the NOC sensor, receiving data back from the NOC sensor, then informing the, the main uh, microcontroller on the ECU uh, as to what's happening with the NOC sensor. But also, the analog to digital reading is on one of the uh, potentiometers on the accelerator pedal. So actually what's happening is uh, there's two potentiometers on the accelerator pedal. One of them comes through an A to D converter on this microcontroller uh, and the other one goes to an A to D converter on the, on the main microcontroller. So I'm guessing it goes uh, through two different paths so that if one piece of hardware fails, uh, it actually can make sense of the other. It's like a fail safe uh, on reading the accelerator pedal and being able to t tell when there's a fault um, because obviously you don't want the accelerator pedal to be uh, open throttle without knowing there's a fault, you know, full full throttle without knowing there's a fault on it. So they have this fail safe in here. Um, so that's basically what this um, microcontroller does. So it does uh, communication with knock sensor, uh, the controller I see on the ECU, uh, and it talks to the main microcontroller telling it what the knock sensor is doing and also programs the, the um, knock sensor. And also it's this second A to D channel for the accelerator pedal. And the things which I thought were JTAG um, interfaces, they're just test, test pads so that actually I guess in the factory when they put it through its um, tests, they can get the, the information out of uh, this microcontroller as to if this microcontroller is working properly and the program on it is working properly. Um, so I've, I found out what this microcontroller does. Unfortunately, it doesn't do what I thought it did, but that just means that the code for reading and writing to the memory on the uh, main uh, microcontroller on this ECU is actually within the main microcontroller uh, and because that's all that, all that I need to find out now. And so if I do the exactly the same to that memory as I've done to this memory, so read it, make a disassembler to disassemble it, and then analyze the code, um, uh, I, it must communicate through the CAN bus and the K-line bus um, to do the actual reading and writing. So that's that's the next step. And so the, the actual beeping through of these uh, chips on the, uh, mic, on the ECU, I, I just verified that um, this is uh, indeed a uh, analog digital uh, multiplexer. So you get things like the engine coolant temperature and the air temperature coming through this A to D converter, uh, well, this A to D multiplexer so that it can switch between different channels. Uh, it's not all of the A to D channels, but it's, it's uh, a, a, some of them, which I guess they needed maybe additional A to D stuff, which they didn't have enough lines on the main e uh, ECU microcontroller. Um, so the, there's a CAN bus interface here uh, which is one of the things which I'm going to uh, take a look at, hopefully, uh, in from the main code in the main ECU, in the main microcontroller on the ECU. Uh, the th throttle motor driver is here. Uh, and then here is uh, a driver for uh, the relays within the fuse box. Uh, this is now I've identified as a controller for the NOC sensor interface on this ECU. Uh, and this is the driver for the fuel injectors uh, on the car. Uh, and then two uh, drivers for the spark, the ignition coils on the, um, on the engine. And then on the lower board, um, so this is a 5 volt regulator. Uh, to supply all the uh, integrated circuits. Uh, this is the NOC sensor interface which the other microcontroller actually communicates with. Uh, and this is the main uh, microcontroller uh, with its program memory uh, and also its uh, random access memory there. Uh, the main microcontroller doesn't have any onboard memory or at least so the datasheet says. There are versions of it which do have onboard memory but the datasheet seems to imply that this one uh, doesn't so all of the program memory should be in here uh, and then this is uh, a driver for the O2 heaters so they require a fairly high amount of power to actually drive the heaters for the O2 sensors uh, and the EVAP purge valve 
uh, and then this is a K-Line interface. So the EC has two uh, communication interfaces, CAN bus and K-Line. Um, and I really need to look into this memory here. Now find out how, find out what CAN bus messages it uses uh, and go specifically to the code for the K-Line interface and the CAN bus interface. Um, because this memory is actually 512k of memory, whereas the other uh, microcontroller only had 4k of memory, which is like much easier to analyze because there's only a, a small amount of memory. However, most of the memory I think in this in this um, for this microcontroller should be mapping tables because they will take up a lot of memory. Um, and but there will be a lot more program uh, stuff going on in this in in this particular microcontroller than for the other one. Uh, but what I should be able to do is find out uh, which pins on the on this device are connected to the CAN bus and which pins are connected to the K-Line interface. And when I actually disassemble the code within this microcontroller, I should be able to get uh, concentrate mainly on the CAN bus interface and the and the K-Line interface and decide how they work and hopefully be able to then manipulate this over the K-Line uh, and CAN bus. So as far as this ECU goes. Um, I've actually uh, found out about all of the bits on it, apart from this main um, microcontroller memory. Uh, so that's all that needs to be done in the next video. Uh, and then I should have all the information I need to do whatever I need with this ECU. And hopefully then in future videos, I should be able to go into tuning the ECU and find out how to um, identify things like the mapping tables and how to manipulate them. Um, and hopefully uh, maybe even find out how to do additional stuff. One of the main things I want to do initially is to actually back up the um, ECU in my car so that I've got at least a backup and I can store the original ECU away untouched uh, and then I can use backups um, to, to do actually um, updates to um, the mapping.